Hi everyone, it's Tammy from the Historical Association of Annapolis Royal. We're bringing you another episode of the Haunting Tales from Annapolis Royal. Tonight we're here at the Garrison House Inn and Alan Melanson is going to tell another story in our series and this one is called The Ghost of Emily. I'm Alan Melanson from Explorer Guide. Tonight, I'm gonna to relate the tale of the ghost of Emily. I just heard about this when Tammy Andrews Topper told me that she had received an email from Denise Rice about a story of a ghost associated here with the Garrison House Inn. Now I've done candlelight graveyard tours for 30 years, just across the street. And I'm gonna say, I've never met Emily I've never been hit by spirits or anything like that. Some people have asked me, have you, do you feel that? I said, no, but they seem to feel spirits around here. The only thing I've ever felt is a bat that hit me in the back of the back here when I was doing the tour once. But anyway, I also lived here in 1981 on the top story of the house where Emily seems to roam. I never saw her, but thanks to the email sent to us by uh, uh, Denise Rice, Got an article from Patricia Lundergan from The Spectator that tells the tale of Emily. So I'll read her article because The Spectator has been very important in our community. Unfortunately, it doesn't exist anymore, but it has told us the tales of births and deaths and marriages and happy occasions and sad occasions. So I will go back to the article filed by Patricia Lundergan, The Spectator columnist. Read them. A bit of dust off of it. An early morning mist slowly creeps along the silent hills of Fort Anne, moonlight glistening on the small droplets suspended in the air, casting a faint glow. The small town is silent as residents sleep. From the shoreline, a drumbeat breaks through the still air. The call to arms echoes through the fort. Has someone at the encampment decided to practice in the wee hours of the foggy morning? Or is it the ghost of the phantom drummer walking the shorelines of Fort Anne? One of our tales related the story of the ghost. In a town with over five, 400 years of European history, there is little wonder folklore and stories of hunting are found throughout the region. Each heritage property has a story to tell. What are the shadows we catch in the moonlight just an illusion or a glimpse of the bygone world? It is said the garrison house has a phantom that only reveals herself to women. In owner Pat Redgrave said women who have visited his establishment over the years have mentioned feeling a presence or have seen and heard something they cannot be explained. From these experiences, the owner has been able to nail down where this particular ghost likes to hang out. I'll tell you, it's on the top floor, street side, uh, right, uh, left window, and uh, we might see her tonight. But the story goes, one night in late October, a woman checked into the inn. The guests, later burst into Redgrave's apartment, telling him Emily wanted to speak with him. Emily, Redgrave said. He wondered, since he knew the woman had checked alone. As it turned out, this particular guest was a channeler. She would use her body as a vessel to communicate with the other world. Redgrave said this channeling experience was the weirdest thing he'd ever heard and seen. Through the 20-minute process, the woman told Redgrave there was a 12-year-old girl named Emily at the inn. <laughs> the Garrison House Inn was built as a hotel, and Redgrave said a 12-year-old girl might have died there years ago from tuberculosis. Redgrave added there was another time when two women were staying at the inn. They heard doors rattling and footsteps running upstairs. Two guests decided to follow the footsteps to the third floor, where they found no one. They 
They checked on their beds and all around, but there were no signs of anyone up there. Redgrave said the guests could tell from the sound of their running footstep that it had been the footstep of a child. The ghost that the garrison now in seems to be that of a playful, almost mischievous girl. Redgrave said she has disappeared for a year or so, the longest time being three years. But she always comes back. Redgrave said she comes out more often when it's quiet. Redgrave has never noticed her, but he said he doesn't dismiss the possibilities of ghosts in the world. People who are sensitive have felt some weird things. The little ghost that seems to roam the inn has endeared herself to staff and guests for years. Now, folks, I spent more time in this graveyard than anybody else. And uh, although I've never felt, heard, or seen a ghost, I have people on my tours who've told me so, that they have. I've also had residents who stayed here in the Garrison House Inn tell me that they have seen orbs and different mysterious things in the graveyard, as well experiencing something while they were here. I hope the new owners, John and Sonia Rich, will uh, endear themselves to Emily and make her a welcome guest in here so that people can appreciate her for years to come. With Tammy Andrew Stupper, who's videotaping this, producing this, and myself, I want to thank you for watching. I want you to stay tuned for our next tale that we'll do from the Royal Bank building. It will be a tale about a soldier the duel and also lost an arm. With the Halloween season approaching, I hope you will watch the rest of our haunted tales of Annapolis Royal, Al Melanson, Explorer Guide, bye bye. Okay, perfect. Oh, this was a dark, dreamy day.